last week, last week, last week, no demos, one six harvest. Copy paste. Three seven. Demos? Who's got the best demos? We haven't seen any demo from you lately. I'm not doing anything. Oh, you need to. I wish I had anything to show, but I don't. <laughs> uh, I don't. I need an update on Fluid. I think I fixed one bug. I fixed one bug, but I did a release which included multiple new features. So maybe I can share that. Um, what else? Something else. So let's see. What's new? What's new? No, oh, yes, here. And did sequential upload parameter. Oh, we saw that last week. Oh, should call. Oh, should call. What? Oh, that's weird. It's usually automatic. I'm confused. So last week we saw that then. Stoyan demo fix localized picker for that field, which we merged. I remember we looked at all these files, but maybe there is an issue because Isham said, no, you merge too quickly. And I'm like, it's been two months. Uh, update chint. Contributor AWS versions. So small, I'm not even sure it mattered. Um, I want to know, selected content type query bomb added multiple times. Okay. Instead of building the URL and appending something, you are just updating round value. This way it won't be added and added and added again. Comments in dependencies, they spin it called props because I assume that your theory is what you're meeting. So you noticed my comments about the lack of comments. And now we have comments. All written pages and should provide a choice for default TFM. Uh, I don't see how this comment is rated with this line. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, now I see. So it's about don't forget to add the default TFM as a choice for the templates because otherwise it won't be used. And if you don't say anything, the default TFM should find its choice in the list of choices. It's, yeah, TFM used, okay, here, TFM used to be the abstractions and modules, but now should default, okay. TFM is at the first position, so that's important. The position is important. I see, cross-targeting build, some assets are only copied on the first TFM, condition default TFM, interesting. Versions are preset for the default TFM, but if you expand, you will see that we also have these versions for the other TFMs. But when we don't say anything, this is for the default one. Okay. Fix deploy Docker image for Windows. This is interesting because I think we mentioned that last week or didn't we? Oh, yeah, I see that. So now I know why. I understand it because I had the same issue on my personal repositories. Issue being that with the new SDK, the 70200, 
the brand new one, the dash dash, the dash O here, which is a dash dash output. So when you want to set what is the folder that will contain, in this case, the published assets, this option doesn't work anymore. Uh, it's an error. It will change it as a warning, but it's an error right now. 200 version. So this error means that when you publish something, you can't use a single folder because some projects will output stuff differently per TFM. So you can't use a single folder. You should use multiple folders. And the output argument doesn't support multiple folders. So what they said is that let's deprecate the output property. And now there are custom properties for each target, like uh, uh, publish, package, all the things you want. And uh, these things, they might be relative to the project itself or to the TFM. So this is why here it's building the absolute path such that it's forcing the output for the published tier to this specific path and it won't vary by project or TFM. Uh, so that's the mitigation from removing that thing. And for the for publish it matters. And in our case, because we pin the framework and we want everything from all the projects there, then that's fine. Uh, so that's why. So that's the same thing. I know there is no confirmation because, okay. There it is. Okay. So that's, that's the reason. Same thing here, same changes here. Just show you another way to do that because I have to change it there, like publish. See for pack, this is the package output path property and no more than dash O like we were using with some publish. And in this case, what I'm doing is use the, this is an absolute path for the current folder of the repository, and then I say in the folder artifacts. So that's another way to do that. If we want to go back here, instead of saying bin release, we could say uh, workspace slash bin slash release and not call any PowerShell stuff here. That's another way to do that, which I kind of prefer, but it's not important. Um, Update fit core 240. So Isham saw the change and updated it. It's great. Fix um, SMTP and succeed docs. Okay, typo. Setting extension priority strategies assignment. Uh, okay, just the name. Not just the name. Removing the underscore. A bug fix, frankly. And update nine kit. Update. Okay, that's good. Questions? No questions. No comments. Uh, topics one six. So let's look at the issues. Where is Orchard for Orchard for? I think we should be we should be pretty good because because people worked. So there is this new one, but otherwise it's completely empty. Which is yeah, and that one there's a PR on that one, so it should be good. So what did you break? You know, I always break stuff. Such part, such from part.
I also added the documentation for the breaking change we spoke about in here. So I saw that. I think I saw that. Yeah, yeah, I saw uh, an explanation about oh, there is a new thing, new form or whatever. OK, so that's the path name. That's the most important change. <clears throat> there is some cleanup too. I don't think that's correct. That's uh, <clears throat> so I question myself too, but there's already we have view models already part of the abstraction class already. That was the only one that I added, but I didn't put the abstraction, so I just moved it there for consistency. When you say the abstraction class, you mean the project? Abstraction project I meant, sorry, yeah. Project, but yeah. we don't put abstractions in namespace. We we have and things that I followed the same thing we have done. Um, I'll, I'll double check real quick, but yeah. And I missed that. Yeah. Not really agree <clears throat> that that's that's wrong to have the name in you know, an M space. Uh, Let me just double check. I mean, I can change it. I just, I think I followed. Yeah, see the existing one already have it. So that's why I did the same exact thing. I didn't yeah, want it to look odd. That's bad. Maybe that's, uh, maybe that was during the, the refactoring of the search modules, but we should not have abstractions in namespace. I can change Since, it for that view model yeah. if you want. Please, please. Yeah, sure. I just don't want to touch the existing one because I don't want to break it. But. OK, let's change it. And even the existing one, I'm like, maybe that, that's wrong. So, but, so it's approved, so you can merge when you've done that. Um, search, search, search. Yes, I believe that's uh, that was introduced when Elasticsearch was introduced, probably, and we missed it. But that's not something you should do. So anywhere. I I understand, but why do you say it's bad? I again, I I'm not disagreeing. I just I'm curious to know your reasoning because you said it's bad. Abstraction is just the name of the project. It doesn't have to reflect the other namespaces. But will it make it easier to identify where it is? No. Well, maybe. Okay. But no, I you know, understand. How, it's not the standard. I just I'm, it is a, just, it is a standard. You will never find, for instance, in ASP.NET or in.NET anything that is in an abstraction package, and that is under abstractions namespace. There is nothing such an abstractions namespace, unless the abstraction in that case means something more important than just this is the abstractions packages or things. But no. Okay. No, that's fair enough. If like abstractions are default, and then if you have implementation specific things, then you create a namespace for these specific things. But abstractions you don't need to. So and and you see, uh, by the way, I search for abstractions, and probably you will never see anything as a namespace. But in this particular case, uh, I mean, if you want me to change the existing ones, I can. But that could be a breaking change for someone. I just don't want to. And we have that also at some while. That's interesting. Now I need to rethink about everything because we can't find some examples. Oh boy. So there are a few of them. So just on the first page, then I can't find a new. See, abstractions, extension manifest, manifest info, it's environment extensions. But if I go back, on the first page, 
there were some other, some of them that uh, passed through like names this one. So it might make sense if it's like an altered abstraction, not the abstractions part of something. So like if the abstraction, right. it's just the meaning what we mean with abstractions. But here I think it's wrong. Would you want me to change <clears throat> the other view models or no? For the view models, I think that's fine. You can change them. So just change at, at least in search, at least in search where you where you change when you change the things. For the rest, we can do it later. But but for these view models, at least we should change them. Update the search module, and that will be good already. Search modules. So ah. again, all the view models. I'm changing the namespace. Yep. Even the old ones. Yep. And you can edit your, your documentation. Like if you are using blah blah blah, use blah blah blah. Yeah. Uh, if they rebuild it, their code is just gonna fail building, and then they can update it. But at least we know it's documented. That. Okay. But some people might not know what to do, and then it will be documented, and they will do it, or they will do it proactively, or they won't find an issue because saying, "Oh, I cannot upgrade because of that." Yes, we know it's documented. This is for the greater good for the long-term change. Uh, yeah. I, I prefer build time breaking changes, compile time breaking changes than runtime breaking changes, where you just deploy something because it builds, but it doesn't work anymore at runtime because it's hard to, to, to change this one. At build time, it's easier to change things. Yep. It's refactoring and checking that it's valid. Okay, good. So 1.6 is ready, so we'll ship. Ship and... Um, Who's going to ship it? You. No. OK, I, 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 will, I will do it then. With two, like, no, like because I, I'm actually wondering because I would like to share to someone if possible, mm -hmm. uh, just so I can see how you guys so i was here. about to say we can do it on thursday but i'm traveling on thursday i need a new passport so i need to go to a consulate and so on thursday i won't be there on friday i will be out also so we might do it next tuesday or next thursday If people want to do proper work like translations, validating it's working, preparing the release, not everything, that's good too. I started the new bot. There is a new bot, and I asked, and they even changed the bot on ASP.NET Core and the runtime repository. Now I'm waiting for them to do that on Orchard Core. I think they have to enlist the repository in the new bot. Otherwise, everything is done. I created some files for that for the CLA. Okay. So that is good. One six is ready. What else? Um, read updates because I'm, I'm remembering that. Your release. What? Where is my release? Oh, I forget to publish the release. It's there. Oh, it's draft. Oh, crap. Stupid. Done. Um, so, what's new with 240? String indexer, uh, what it is? This one is interesting. This one is super interesting. Dates, stuff, and bugs. Okay, string indexer should return in. What is that? Element at first seems to be not working anymore. 
ID dot first. What is it about string first size? First is A, size is three, index zero is net nil. Okay, so I'll be fixing one of these bugs. Doesn't matter much. Implement using STRF time formats. This one is huge, I think. Because it was missing some specific. Um, support here. For formatting stuff. Um, some of them were not implemented correctly or at all. So now all of them are implemented from Ruby. What is the second argument? Date time. Format expected and date time. Format expected. Oh, that's just to get the, the year in this case. Oh, yeah, yeah, so there are some. Yeah, some very waste cases like. This, this is adding support for formats that will depend based on the first day. Of the week, for instance. Um, the year is different based on the first day of the week or something like that, or the number of. Yeah, that, that is something like this and this site and. Um, yeah, and. and and now this is supported, so I don't remember exactly the, the things, but. If you ask for the number of weeks of the current day. Then it might depend on what is the first day of the week, and there is a standard like Monday, but sometimes you say that Sunday is the first day of the week. So that 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 matters uh, and that is supported now. This is one of the changes here, plus the new. Formats that are supported even past. So that's what is changed here for dates. This one introduce local time zone for time zone thinking. Uh, so there is a time zone filter. And and and. There is a time zone filter. And I followed the recommendation here, which is to say local dates. Yep. So if you want to use a time zone that is um, the local time zone of the configuration, so in order that it will be configured as the standard time zone, then you can use local. If you because you might get a UTC date, and you want to display it with a local time zone, so this is what you would do. If you don't, if you don't want a specific one, like you could say Pacific or whatever, New York or whatever you want. But if you want to use whatever the system has as the local time zone, you can do now local. That's the idea. So that could be useful. Date filter returns input value as date when not no filter is specified. I don't remember what it is. It's not fixing any issue. Let's see. Eight input no filter. It's written the local time. I don't remember what it does. Or oh, maybe because it was returning nothing and now it's returning uh, a value. Okay. If you call date filter, good. Concatenate arrays with single elements. An array concatenated with a value or the opposite. Now it's working. And this one also, equality checks before um, 
the issue was that if you were comparing two arrays which were identical, let's say this is one array, this is another array, and if you do x equals equals y, you expect the two of them to be the same, and it was not the case. Same thing with dictionaries. So this is a test to see people one, so a string split, the same string split, so we have three items in the arrays. So now the goal is that people one equals people two. This was not the case before. It was always returning false, whatever we passed. There was a small bug here, it was missing a return to that, that, that's the only thing, but now it's working. So that's what's new in 240. I think the best uh, thing is the local filter here and um, the custom formats in Ruby that are supported now. That's it for Twig. Topics on six harvest. I see Victoria is here. What do you want to say? Nothing to be said about harvest. It's pretty full. If there's nothing to say, I have a question, but we'll give her a chance to speak. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, because you unmuted. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, so, um, I have uh, sent you uh, an email. Uh, Got it. I read it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, I sent it about the quote from the it. venue. Yes, and uh, uh, do you have any uh, comment or question about it? I have. I would say that lunch is fine to provide. Dinner is definitely not needed. Why? And almost saying, don't provide the dinner. People will want to leave at five and go away mm -hmm. and not wait for mm -hmm. a dinner that they might not like or not use. So just no mm -hmm. dinner. Boom. Having coffee, drinks, snack, lunch, it's good. It's nice. Depending on the price mm -hmm. and the price seems, seems fair, uh, but the dinner is completely uh, useless. And it makes things oh. much cheaper for everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Um, uh, some maybe I I remember then uh, wrong that uh, previously you had uh, dinner together. So then I will. That's uh, that's, that's different. What we had at some point was outside of the venue. We mm -hmm. organized a yeah. dinner in some restaurant based on the budget, and we were was sponsoring it if there was a sponsor for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so. The reason why I asked about the dinner is that there aren't um, um, restaurants in the nearby to this. Uh, it's okay. We won't. It's okay to not do one. Yeah. I mean, people can okay. organize their own stuff. Okay. Okay. Then, uh, then uh, I will uh, tell uh, Becky about it. But uh, so, do you think that the the price is fair? Uh, for this uh, this center, I, I need to check the rest of the prices per head, and mm -hmm. uh, but for the conference room, I think it was it was correct. I just need to check again the food for. I saw the food mm -hmm. quote and I saw the year. That's the only thing I I looked at, and we need to check the price for the the rest of the snacks and lunch per mm -hmm. person based on the price we ask for the entry. Yeah, yeah, it depends. yeah, it depends on us what uh, we would like. And also, uh, I have one more question. So because uh, the the project, uh, the, um, the presentation part was also a question uh, in the email. So uh, do you think that uh, this uh, TV is acceptable? I don't know. What they can provide? I don't know. They say a, t a 70 inch TV is OK, plus a different personal TV, maybe. I will trust them because we've never done that with the TV, but it was a projector, so. I, I think it's it's too small. They say I mean, that if we you're have sitting all the TV. way to the back. Yeah, that's that's the that's my comment. Like if you read some code from a TV, that might be hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that's probably the most important thing because people are sitting and watching all day. So, yes, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, because uh, she said uh, in the email, I, I also uh, forwarded to you that uh, she said that we don't need uh, uh, any other uh, thing because it's uh, it's good uh, for that many people. But uh, I also not that uh, sure about it. So. So uh, yeah, we have to uh, decide this because uh, then it's a deal breaker if it's not good. But yeah, they say there is a, a second TV they can have in the middle of the room for people who are further. I don't know. Uh, uh, sorry, can you repeat it? I didn't understand. They said in the email you sent me that they could have a different TV in the middle of the room for the people mm -hmm. in the back. That might be mm -hmm. fine. I, I, I don't know. I, I've always used a projector and I don't know with a TV how, how it looks like. Mm -hmm. We will need to have the same size of the TV and check the same length. Who's the further uh, from the TV and, and, and test it like um, for real? Like, you no, know, I have a TV. I can go away from my living room and <laughs> see if I can read it. But I, I'm, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, if if you would, yeah, if you could check it and then give a feedback, uh, that would be well, really good. I, someone should go there and see if they can read. That's the only feedback we can see. Like, maybe, oh, maybe we can do that. Oh, Send yeah. them a picture of what we want to be displayed on TV. Like, oh, take a, we take that, for instance. Okay. And this is, uh, we zoom like, uh, mm -hmm. I can, route, if right. needed, I can go to in person and actually yeah, uh, do I, something I, like that. Okay, and yeah, you display just, the text on the TV oh. and and you see, can you read? Sorry. So that, that's okay, that's what so... we should do. Vicky, Vicky if you want to arrange with them, uh, I, I can mm -hmm. I can go in person and uh, kind of look at everything, and I can take pictures also for. If I were sitting to see and I can share that, if that helpful, I can do that. Take your HDMI cable and plug to your to their TV and open Visual Studio. Zoom what you Well, I mean, I'm guessing they have, I'm guessing yeah. they'll have some sort of a cable, monitor. Probably. Just put anything and I'll just see how, how clear it is from sitting in the back. Take your video. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be a, a huge help. I also just thought about it that, okay, maybe you could actually go there. Uh, sorry, I somehow didn't think about it uh, before uh, to ask you. So I will ask the lady if it's possible, but I think she already mentioned that it is possible to check uh, it. Obviously. Mm. If if they were not okay with that, then <laughs> we'll be like oh. yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But but okay. thank you. That I think that would be the the best thing to decide if it's uh, good for us or no. Okay, uh, let me check if I have. Yeah, uh, yes, and uh, so one thing about uh, the selling the tickets. Uh, so, do we have an account for uh, this website, the uh, event, right? Uh, so, so, or should I? Or to do what? How is it? So, you mentioned uh, this uh, the website where uh, you sold the the tickets previously. Yes. 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 So, is there an account for Harvest or? Uh, I can. Check. It was not for that. It was my own account, mm -hmm. account I created and I linked to the Donate Foundation bank account to check out the, mm -hmm. the money out of the tickets. That's what I did. Uh, mm -hmm. So we can do the same thing or create another one. I need to check with Donate Foundation first what they want to do. I didn't yeah. get the confirmation from them how they would give back the money. So I need to check with them again. They said yeah. I got two emails, but I didn't get an answer to the email, so I wouldn't. But that's what I did last time. Yeah, even bright account, um, and uh, I created, and I, then I just put in the book information for the mm -hmm. where you want uh, the money to go there. Yeah, and uh, if um, if we will uh, have the the venue, then we can start the tickets, and uh, 
Do you have any additional info on uh, uh, how to decide uh, the price for uh, the tickets? Because uh, I will uh, check, uh, for example, how much is the dinner. Yep, and, exactly. Uh, That's how you yeah, do that. And, Excel file I sent you to Excel files. You see how, how I did that. And I did send you the files, right? I did send you some files with the. Pretty sure I sent you some Excel uh, yeah, files with the, the budget. budget. Yes, 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 yeah. And I already created uh, one uh, for this year based on uh, the previous ones. Uh, so yeah, I, I checked it. Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, about how you decided the price before. You put 100 and uh, if the balance is positive, then that's fine. If it's not, then you put mm -hmm. 200 and uh, <laughs> That's how we oh, okay, okay, I see, I see. And if, okay. if it's positive even without anything, then it's zero. Everyone can come for free. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I think that was all of my questions. Uh, Mike, you said uh, that you have one question earlier. But not for yeah, the not not for the one point, not for the harvest. Oh, OK, sorry, I thought that. Oh, you're good. No worries. Yeah, let's finish with the harvest. OK, thank you. I think that's done. Mike? Say that again. I think she's done. OK, so I just have a, a general question about approach. I'm wondering how you go about solving it. Um, so. I have a, a, a content item where I put, I have a back part, and in the back part, I put a bunch of links, links to an images. Essentially, what I want to do with these images, I want to take those links, external links, okay, and then process it. So I send it through an API service, and this API service transform the image by doing like cleanup, like background removal and things like that. Once the, the image is transformed, what I do is I want to store it locally in the media, uh, you know, in the media that's attached to the content item. So inside the back part with every link, I put so, like information about the transformation, like was it transformed, yes or no? Uh, if, it, if it did it, like I have logs, so I understand why that specific link failed or whatever, right? So the the thing is with the with the background transformation, it could take time because you're taking every image, you're uploading it to an external service, and then it's processing trans transformation, and then you're downloading it, and then you're storing it on your local machine or your local store. So that takes time, right? And so what I do is I take them, I process them. And then basically I have a loop that goes over these content items that I need to process. And then every time I finish processing one content item, I actually save it to database. Uh, and when I save it, I make sure I check concurrency uh, before saving. Because I've been running into an issue where someone could be updating the content item from the UI or through, through an API. So because sometimes it takes like 20 seconds to update that one content item from the time you pull it from the database to the time you actually save it, um, I, I just want to prevent that process to override a user yep. input, okay? So that's what I've been doing. And that process runs in, in a background task that runs every five minutes and basically checks if there's any content items that needs to be processed and it process it. Okay. However, I'm running with a weird issue. I don't know if, if, if it's a cause. A weird issue where I end up with two content items, both latest and both published. The same ID, but two published versions. And I don't know if the concurrency is protecting me here or, or not. And how would you, is there a better approach than using a background task for such a thing? So that way I can always update these external links or process them 
but it has to be done in behind the scenes because it can take time. No, I think the background task is good. Um, it depends. So the background task is not, it will check for all the content items every five minutes all the time, right? Well, there is an index, so I okay. query the index to see what actually see. have changed. Yeah, okay. which one that's need to be done. Oh, interesting. So you know, you know which one you need to, you need to process. So you can say, oh, there is nothing more to process, or there is a new content yeah. item to process, and then you check the links. So correct. Course, that's why each item has a was process. So I check if once you save the content item, I check and I update the index. How many haven't been processed? So I update my index all the time. So then, yeah. when I query, I query the index. Don't don't get don't keep your content item in memory for 20 seconds or whatever time it is necessary for the API to work. Just send the API call, get the file, and then when you want to update the content item, load it, change, save, like in, in the same session. So you can create a new a new session to do that or clear some session cache to well, I call, so I call the save. I don't know if that's what you mean. The save changes the sync. I call that immediately after I'm done updating that one content no, item. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the load and the save after also. You load it, you send the API, then you load it again, but from a different session. And you save the, the, the latest one you loaded, not the first one you loaded. This way you don't keep the the content item you loaded 20 seconds before in memory. Wait, so have two sessions? You can have two sessions. If you don't do that, it will still use the one from before because the session remembers the one it already loaded. OK, and then you will have concurrency issues. So either you create a new session or you clear the internal cache. I don't remember. Um, I think we can remove it from loaded, like unload it or something like that. Yeah, OK, so if there is that, is that's it, fine. So it's important to load it and unload yes. it inside the loop? Well, either you, re, you uh, it's important to load a new one before you update the thing. Because there is a long delay between the load and the save otherwise, and this long delay will make concurrency an issue because some people might be able to edit the content item at the same time and then it will fail because you will see the concurrency check will fail. To prevent that, you load the content item in memory for the smallest time you can, which is after the API is done. And if you have to reload it, fine, you reload it. And then you update the link and you save it. And to reload it, either you unload it or you create a new session. Okay, I'm just trying to trace that logic uh, to see if I understand. Um, okay, I'll I'll uh, okay I'll I'll see if I can uh, if, if I can do. trace. Yeah. And the issue. Well, is I don't that... call the API. I call I save it directly to the database. But someone else could be calling my API to update the same content item. Like someone else could be calling my API, but I save in the session. Isn't that what you do, like to process the image? Yeah, that's in the background task. Yeah. Yeah. OK. That's your background task. What I'm seeing, instead of doing that, you do that. Whatever I need to do. Okay, you well, load and change. I'm updating, so I'm curious because so if I load, so I have the content item. It's still in if if I load it, 
it's still the same one. So when I make an update to it, it's still loaded. Yeah, and that's why I, I say save it. forget previous. So load is either so forget previous content item and then you reload because it's forgotten, so it will run a new one. Or no, so it's not optional then. So it's forget or create new session. You don't want to use the exist the currently loaded content item. You want to ignore this one to, to dismiss this one. So start a loop, load, process, and then somehow remove that loaded one from the from the cache, mm -hmm. and then load it one more time. You don't happen to have five minutes if I send you a code later so you can just review it to make sure that logic makes sense. Can check. Remove everything is not what we want. I don't see anything here that really unknown. No, it. but there is a session. You can directly inject the session itself and just manually oh from this, yeah but it's not sufficient because there is an identity cache in the content manager which yeah but is, inside the content manager if you look at it there is a session oh the i content manager session this is what you need okay. yeah yeah exactly clear. okay you can just clear. clear well i don't know if i can clear uh oh, you can. clear clears everything you don't yeah. want to clear everything that's okay well i think that i content session is stored as a singleton it's per so session. Would... Nope, it's it's a uh, deep. It's a uh, um, uh, what's the name? Per uh, request. Per request, yeah. Deep, yeah. What's the name? Depend uh, singleton transient and scoped. Scoped. It's scoped. Yeah, for uh, definitely scoped. The same way as the session. So you can call clear and. Uh, <coughs> Okay, but yeah, you can call clear. Yeah. So call clear just before. Let me see that logic. So put that the clear right before the update. Before you load, that's very important. Before you load, such that when you load, it doesn't choose something from the content manager session, but it will reload it from the database. If you call load before clear, it will take it from the content manager session. Okay, clear, then load again, mm -hmm. and then update, That's and it. then save. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Should work. Let me know. OK, I think we're done. Thanks, everyone. So no so meeting, no meeting on, Thursday, yeah? Yeah, no meeting on Thursday, sorry, twice in a row. There was a, an org at Microsoft meeting that I had to attend. Um, and and uh, yeah. See you on Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.